I can comfortably say that this has been my least enjoyable climb to the highest ranking master duel so far in the season, and it's primarily because of the deck I played. You see right here? This deck. On honestly, playing this deck feels like ass. Like, first of all, it's not, it's incomplete. Like, it's it's not, it's, it's not good. It, it, it's, I'm... Um, Let's get that out of the way. This is not a good deck. You should not be playing this deck if your goal is to win. It, first of all, it's right now. It's the deck is extremely linear. It's really boring to play. It's it's oftentimes in your games you're playing like it feels like you're playing an interactive cutscene, and like you, you don't you, where you don't really have control over the game. Like, like first of all, you're this deck is not consistent. There will be many games where you can't play the game because you, you bricked. There will be many times where your opponent's playing Kashira for some for some reason that I don't know why they would. They brick and then they don't play the game, and it's like, oh, cool, cool, fun, fun Yu Gi Oh. Even when you get to play and you get your combo off, you know what your combo does. And your combo locks three zones of Shangri-La, which is like... Unless your opponent's playing a like Pendulum deck, that's actually not the biggest deal. They have a way to they have a way to get rid of this before they actually fully get five zone locked. And you Diabloses rip a card out of their opponent's extra deck, which if your opponent's not playing exactly tier elements, it's also you'd be surprised by how many decks can actually don't mind one a single extra deck rip. So, yeah, and then you s banish eight cards from their, up to eight cards from the top of their deck. That's like a, you basically like pot of liars and well game them a draw, which can be. You you don't know how good that is. Sometimes it's the best thing in the world. Sometimes your opponent literally loses the game when their deck's completely done, or sometimes it does literally nothing, it's, and like neither you nor your opponent will know. Like what the re end result of that is. So after all that, you have an you have like a you have an unreliable zone lock. You have an extra deck rip that may or may not matter, and then you have you banish eight cards, which may or may not matter. And the only actual interruption you end on the board is like you change your summoning a fender, which is like if if your banish is missed and your opponent's not playing tier. It's like your, your combo didn't even accomplish any anything, and all they have to play through is a fender. And then it's like, well, this this deck sucks. And then it's like you either win the game on a spot, or you, you you basically do nothing on your first turn. And you don't you're doing the same combo every time. It's just it's just luck whether you're managing useful cards and you're you're playing a good match or not. And you might be asking, well, why not just play? The Wombo Combo version, the, the Punk version with like Tomahawks and level 7 extenders and stuff, and... Look, if, there, if there's one thing that cashier cards are good at, is that the main deck monsters are damn good. And they trade favorably with your opponent's monsters, with your opponent's cards. Like, Fender will trade 2 for 1 with your opponent's cards. Unicorn is unhand... If they want to hand trap this, they're going to lose multiple cards from your extra deck over like 2 turns or something. Or, or something most likely. It, like you enter battle phase with these and it's like a threat. Right? Turning these two, these things into something like a tomahawk, which then loses to a single hand trap, when these are normally very good against hand traps, where they either choose to negate you and then have to deal with the the uh, Fenrir or the the unicorn on their turn, or they let you get a search for free and, and their hand trap is going to minus them anyways. So I'm playing this more like a a mid-range deck with lots lots of non-engine because God knows that, that the deck needs other cards besides engine to win in, in some way, whether it be Tama, the Tomahawk combos or whether it be, be hand traps. So that's why I liked including the adventure engine, because the Adventure Engine are, is actually good cards. You know, an Omni Negate, which is something this deck... By just by having Engine, its Engine cannot produce an Omni Negate. You know, and 
I'm like going with the full combo, wombo combo, tomahawk, or punk route. You're not exposing yourself in a way that gets you hurt more by maxi or get hurt by more by hand traps. I like it when they, my opponent maxis me. They, they get one card out of it and then I for sure, <laughs> sure uh, get one card out of their hand at least with my engine. And then I, you know, if you had a, a right, you would get an Omni Negate for giving them one draw to summon Griffin Rider on their turn. Or if they, at best, they would maxi in the draw or stand my face and then they would get one draw. So it's like they just cycle a card and I would still have Fenrir on the field. So it's, and then instead of having a bunch of level seven extenders and combo pieces or garnets that are basically dead in my hand and won't do anything because I'm under maxi, instead I, I'll have more hand traps to, to deal with my opponent's board. Cause Fenrir again, these cards are threatening just by themselves. Cells when, especially when you backed up with, with more non-engine. My ideal end board is not even having any XCs on the field at all. But my ideal end board is a Fender or Unicorn or maybe even both on a field with a Griffin Rider and then two or three hand traps in hand. But I know the hand traps for sure do stuff. I know the one and Griffin Rider for sure does stuff. I'm not just banishing random cards and if I, I play into Kashira and the, the, the extra deck rip and none of the zone locks even matter at all. I know I I know I have stuff on board that is going to be threatening in most situations, basically any situation. So, and that let's go on to the card choices. I suppose that obviously we have to max out on all all the cashier cards and roll them because you know there's not there's not many of them. And then the adventure engine takes up a lot of space. I even run the foolers. Because Foolers, even if you have access to Rite already, you can just Foolers dump something for Cash to your Birth because God knows you could use more ways to get access more monsters and you know, if you're down bad, Cash to your Birth reviving something you, you dumped, it still lets you do something. Speaking of, I see a lot of people not running 3 Births. If you're playing any sort of like Cash deck where Cash to your is your main goal, or, or especially pure cast hero, you, 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 you want to run 3 birth. This is the best card in your deck. This card does like does like 3 things. And people always forget about the, the spell card effect, where that banish 3 cards in your opponent's graveyard if they use a spell when you control a cash monster, because... You know, it, it is it is the last effect of 3 effect, and who who reads that far into a card, right? But yeah, you... you every... Anything you want to, every single turn, or every single play you want to involve using cash to your verbs. And this is your best form of follow up. And even having multiple is fine because if you. Because most likely, if they break through your board, you're gonna, they're gonna get rid of the birth because the birth is the most threatening card. And then having a second one as a follow up is still nice. You, you always want to access this card. That, that's like run, run three of this. And for the hand traps, so Mourner. Unfortunately, I think this is not just me coping that I tr crafted three mourners. I think this is genuinely the best deck to use mourner in. It's like it does so much for a deck because we're running shifters, right? So you can't run well, you can run veilers, but veilers conflicts with shifter whenever you draw it. It also conflicts with you know if you're playing a mirror match, your opponents likely for some reason they're also on their own shifters and they might be on D Fisher. So yeah, you don't want more potential death card. Like, th this card's re really nice. It, it hits, I guess it's not relevant right in any, won't be relevant as much anymore, but hits tier effects on your turn. So they make a kick house on your turn. This completely counters that. This is, like, th it's fantastic whenever, th whenever they try to happen as you're thinking, thinking they'll get somewhere. And also level three tuner, because it's the best extra deck monster in this deck is it's not Diablosis, it's not Shangri or a big guy, it's 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 Baron to Fleur. <laughs> you know, the best end board, Griffin Rider, Baron with a Fender. I like, will take that over Shangri Era, Diablos' Fender every, any day of the week. And I suppose for cards that you might see in more pure cash builds that you don't see in here. So stuff like Call by the Grave, 
And this is pretty much just, especially with tier ground in the meta, this will be pretty much just for maxi. And I don't really... Again, I'm perfectly content with sitting on big cashier monsters backed by hand traps. I'm not trying to combo into like things, because when you play combo versions, you're not guaranteed to, to draw the outs to maxi. Basically, so I just... Yeah. And the adventure engine takes up a lot of space. The things I was running in place of the adventure before I came to the adventure engine were basically triple tactics and evenly matched. The problem is that, as I mentioned, this deck has a low power level, and it kind of, as a mid range deck, you want all cards in your hand as live as possible. So, in that case, having sitting on Fender, but with an evenly matched hand, the evenly match was useless because this deck doesn't auto win going first. So, you don't want dead cards, you don't want to do a combo. And then end up with dead cards in hand. You're, you're, as I mentioned, your combo is not nowhere close to the auto winning the game. And then you just have evenly match in your hand, and it's like you feel feel like an idiot because because it's just chilling there. You can't do anything with it. Or if you had like infirm mourners on top of your monsters, it's it'd be better. I mean, triple tactics is like the same way. It, it's it's good when it goes off, but it just does not go go off consistently right now. Uh, especially, there's people shotgunning Maxi in the draw and standby phase, so that's... If they're doing that, that's like half targets for triple tactics gone. You're pretty much only gonna get it from Ash. as a commonly played hand trap. It doesn't work with Infirm. So, 66% of the time, this is also gonna be as dead in your hand when you go first as evenly matched. So I just like... If these were just adventure cards, I would have one more guaranteed interruption on top of it. If this was Mourner, I would have another interruption on top of it instead of just, just like having this dead card in hand with a Fender on the board that's easy to go over by itself. Add extra deck, like you run three of everything because extra is that two now, so you run two extra and one Power of Prosperity. This Donner comes up one in 20 games. This literally does never come up. This could honestly just be a third Dark Arm Dragon for all I care. I never never make you barely make any of these anyways. I, I ideally I don't even go into the extra deck. I if I, if I go into the extra deck that means I drew a bunch of Castera monsters and I have to make a play it because I don't because I have to use the cards in my hand. But if I don't go into the extra deck that means I probably have a bunch of non engine and a bunch of adventure cards. And personally I like that better because that means I have guaranteed interruptions instead of conditional interruptions based on, again, what I banished, and I also, you don't play into hand traps that way. Yeah, let, let's see some actual quote-unquote gameplay with this deck. Alright, so this is basically like one of the ideal combos of the deck, and the basic idea of what you want to do. So, Unicorn, Birth, and then Prosperity will reveal uh, Fender, Fender plus Unicorn does the combo. So you norm activate Birth, you normal summon the Fender with Birth. Fender will add Rise Heart, go into Shangri-Era first, and the right use Rise Heart's effect to banish, mill 3, and then lock his own. Uh, to an unknown, you always usually want to start locking these three zones right here, opposite of the EMZ you summon Shanker Era to. That way you cut people off of their link plays because uh, when a link deck, they, they have to summon a link monster to the EMZ first and then having these zone slots cuts them off of link plays for the rest of the turn because they have no more arrows. So just a little thing. Hasn't really come up whenever I've, do, I've done this, but you know, uh, it can it can happen. Then. Uh, Ogre, you summon back the Ogre to get the prep, which does nothing, because we have nothing banished. You go into Diabolus's, you rip the Kick House out of their extra deck, and you auto win the game. Then you shangri lock its zone, then shangri lock another zone. So you have three zones locked right now, and your opponent has one opportunity to use a monster effect. Or we summon, because we summon Fender first. As soon as Fender triggers, they're going to lose all their zones, so they can't deal with the shangri -Ra. Our opponent summons Fender first. Big mistake. Because when they trigger Fender, then our Fender is going to banish their Fender. And Diablos is going to 
Banish and Sengar is going to lock up their fourth monster zone. And then after Diablos' banishes, Sengar is going to trigger again and that locks all five zones. So to know about how to play against this deck is don't commit a monster. Uh, don't activate a monster effect on the field because that will enable Fender to trigger, which will lock the two of your remaining zones and obviously it removes your monster. So you have to try to play around that that first. If you can activate an, an effect or find a way to deal with the board without using a monster effect on the field, that's your that's your best chance. Alright, so this is a can that showcases, I guess, the adventure engine. We draw uh, two of extravagance, birth, rise heart, Plus Ogre, that is a combo, a 3 hard combo. We have to summon Ogre first before activating it right, because you know we need to control no monster spell summon Castera. Uh you don't need to summon Rise Heart there. I forgot I realized Draco Back was already in my hand, so I didn't need to actually search it. I could have just directly added Griffin Rider and dumped Draco back to equip to the token. Then Raw is gonna summon the Griffin Rider. A banish Fender go into the Shangri Era. And then Burf. Summon back the Fender, Fender effect, search unicorn, and normal unicorn. And this is the only thing we lose out from using the adventure engine. Half the combo lines, all you end up like, uh, like the only normal summon effect you end up losing is either like a unicorn to search a burf, which we already have, or sometimes it's an ogre to search a preparations. But if you notice in these setups, uh, Preparations isn't even live, like we don't have anything to special summon off Preparations. So it's not really a big deal that you don't get that either. And in exchange for like not searching the extraneous card in these setups, we get an Omni Negate. So obviously you go Diablosis, banish the... <laughs> You're gonna see why I banish Utopia later. And why I go after their back rows. So opponents are I'm just gonna flip this there, I know I have it. Summon out the Fender of Shangri-La, your opponent sets 3. That is why we went over their back row. After their back row, they're gonna grave the Super Ancient Organism. Little did I realize this card actually sucks because it only affects monsters with levels that are 6 or higher. Uh, not not my Xyz. So, if anything, all that does is force out Griffin Rider, except it doesn't even need to because I could have Drago backed it back if I wanted to. Our opponent's gonna just chain Dogmatic Punishment, killing the Griffin Rider, and we get our Unicorn. That's gonna trigger Preparations, and they they give up because they have nothing to pop. I, I'm either gonna bounce back their their Grave, or I'm gonna rip a card from their hand and lock their back. Either either way, their entire back was getting locked this turn, most likely. So, yeah, fun, fun games. No. Sh share if you play. Sh share if you fucking play. Holy. Man, what what a <laughs> look, look 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 at this poor guy. That doesn't even have royal entis. All right, so another banger of a cashier game. We're playing against this deck's worst matchup. So going first, we have Ogre. Ogre's gonna add the preparations, Acre Rise Heart, and we're gonna negate that maxi. Uh, activate Ogre, reveal. Our opponent's playing 8 axe, 60 card 8 axes. With Kaijus, Lava Golems, Lightning Storms, Board Breakers, and Owner Seal. Literally half, like 80% of their deck just outs whatever the hell I want to do with cash here. So, fun, fun, fun matchup coming ahead. Yeah, it doesn't matter what we banish because we're just going to banish the next three. And then Burf can re, re rack Defender, we banish. This is a double rank 7 XDs. Going to Shangri Era. Normal, oh, the Unicorn. Another misplay. I don't act the unicorn. I don't know why the hell you <laughs> like this. Definitely should have cost me the game because if you unicorn at birth and they clear your field, which my opponent is playing 
playing eight axes. Of course, they're gonna clear my field. What do you think is gonna happen? Like, I would have the bird for follow up, but instead, you know, for some reason, I decided not to get a free card. Who, who, who needs free cards, right? We go into Mind Hacker. Try. I tried to uh, see what they get the rid of the zoos in their extra deck, and they're not gonna let me. They held their infirm for that long, but for literally the entire time. That's a pretty disciplined infirm. And I'm gonna set preparations and active preparations just to cap it phase up on the field. Get the fender. And my opponent enters battle phase and even leads me. You know, big big surprise, they cleared my board with their deck full of board breakers. And they gamma seal my fender. Fortunately, they don't have any follow-up because they use their entire two hand fast plus two board breakers to deal with cash here, which is like not feel like not very efficient. Feel like you could have just used the two board breakers and just done the, the same result, so. Yeah, now we're going to beat them down with the, their own Gamma Seal. And set an Imperm. I pull a top deck Slumber, and this, as an 8-axis player myself, this is true pain. When you're the best card in your deck, a Board Breaker plus Extender, it's Ash Blossom. It's, it feels bad. And then we draw into the Burf. This Burf should have been in my hand to begin with. We should have just won last turn. but. Again, this is why I run three birth because birth is any time after turn one, and games are gonna go go past turn one a lot because this deck sucks, and you're gonna get your your board broken a lot because your board doesn't do anything. Uh, having birth as a follow up is incredible because watch this, you get the reborn defender, and defender adds unicorn, and then you get the normal unicorn for free, and then that searches birth another birth. So they clear our field again. We have even more follow up. This is also game. You attack directly, and even with a Gizmic Orchi, it just gets banished by the Fender. So yeah, we uh we got lucky in that our opponent's hand was bad enough to where they couldn't kill us after breaking their board, and we got lucky to top deck a Burf that uh, we we were supposed to search, but uh, just somehow didn't because because we're we're trash at this game. All right, this is the most interactive. Cashier Mirror I played. One of the few ones that had interaction. Speaking of interaction, maxing the standby phase to avoid losing to a Unicorn, ripping an extra deck card, I suppose. Then Prosperity, I'll reveal Fender, and I'm not even giving them a draw. I'm norm I'm activating Burf and normal summoning Cashier or Fender. <laughs> and then passing Adding unicorn, then passing on the set infirm. So don't so I don't give him a draw off maxi. And our opponent special to unicorn. This is unbelievably devastating. <laughs> this cast here, mirror match, whoever goes second has like the advantage of because your all your cast here monsters have effects that trigger when they attack, that they can just summon their monster and enter battle phase and attack over your fender and then trigger their suppose they had a fender. They would attack trigger fender their fender would banish my fender and then my fender wouldn't get a chance to activate so yeah in this case they have unicorn which is uh this basically the same thing because on attack declaration right they're gonna attack over my fender so yeah then they're gonna add birth so either way your cast your monsters lose to your opponent's cast your monsters and burv is gonna with the normal summon ogre to get a preparations. And they're gonna go into mind hack. I don't know why they did this, this lineup. Okay, so you see they look at my extra deck. They 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 take out Dark Arm Dragon the Right, first of all, it's like questionable to go for an extra deck rip against Cashier anyways, knowing that this deck runs like extravagance and pot of prosperity. So like you really don't care that much about your extra or zone locking the opponent. And then I'm gonna maxi on the burst summon, which they're gonna ash, because of why would they not have ash maxi? And yeah, come here back comes the unicorn back and I'm gonna set three. So we're gonna use Burp to revive the Fender, actually Fender effect, you're gonna <laughs> Dog. What? <laughs> Solemn strike cash. Okay, okay. Well, they're gonna strike that. That gives me a chance to special unicorn. Unicorn effect, add birth. 
Uh, they're gonna rip. I'm gonna infirm now because they, for some reason, for some reason, they let Zeus stay in my extra deck. So if they're gonna let me keep Zeus, I'm just gonna infirm it because like I wouldn't expect them to keep Zeus. There's no point infirming me last turn because I thought they were just gonna. They're gonna have two chances to extra deck rip me. So yeah, I thought my Zeus was was gone anyways, but they just didn't take it the first time. Then they're gonna activate. Uh, preparation, even though it doesn't work like that. And I'm gonna take away their Zeus. Special Rise Hard. Rise Hard, Banish Ogre. Uh, overlaying the Big Eye. Big Eye, take their Diablosis. And I'm gonna. Really, I just wanna banish four cards from their extra deck. I, their extra deck does not really matter in, once their Zeus is gone. Then we're gonna attack. Can only attack with Diablosis, can't attack with Big Eye. Uh, we're gonna banish the uh, unicorn face down, and then go into Zeus and wipe the board. It's which are gonna called by the grave a maxi. Yeah, we have the birth as follow up, so this game is basically won unless they have the most insane top deck in the. And no, their top deck is a rise heart, and this card definitely. This card does a whole lot by itself. Yeah, we're gonna top deck another birth. Why? Why? Why not? What? You know? Why? Why not? Fender effect. Yeah, they're gonna concede there. Yeah, most interactive cashier mirror match involves opponent not not Diablos to seeing away my Zeus and losing to it. Now let me show you how some cashier games more typically go. So our opponents. Normal summons the rise heart. Definitely, definitely what you want to be doing. Activates flashing fire to special Hugin. This man's playing runic Kashtira without a rise heart. Right, so yeah, this this Hugin is getting hit with the biggest imperm of its life. And now they're locked into XC, so they they pass. My turn. Uh Unfortunately, there's a there, we got a little problem here with the right of Artemis here and and the and the word wondering Griffin right. Very unfortunate. Maybe that's a reason not to play the Adventure Engine to be honest. Draw into just the most live cards in my deck: D Shifter and Infinite Impermanence. Activate right just to summon the 2K body because 2K body beats over the Rise Heart. Activate Faithful Venture, dumping the Shifter because I don't need this. <laughs> Does not do anything in this match. Special summon Water Enchantress. They're gonna hit my adventure token, which was probably a misplay. They, they probably should have just hit it when I added enchantress. So because this still special summons are free. Which then allows me to normal summon Rise Heart. Can't use this effect because I activated it right. Because, you know, totally it's going to have the most relevant effect right now. And we crash the, the water enchantress to get another right for next turn. And we're playing adventure token beatdown plus Rise Heart beatdown. Versus our opponent's... <laughs> Nice, nice top deck. Ni nice, nice top deck, sir. So, <laughs> yeah, our opponent's gonna. So yeah, yeah, you know, neither of us drew our actual good cash tier monsters, so our opponent actually just lost to Adventure Token Beatdown. <laughs> What what a what a great deck! What what what, what just what, what an absolute great deck! So, so if a rise heart does not come, I I just don't recommend playing this deck. This no don't don't do it to yourself. It's not it's not worth it. Especially you know if people are saying pure, purely is coming, like car there are cards that are good against purely that just that just destroy cash as well. Like full power cash, I'm talking about. So imagine what it does to just twenty percent power game to cash, right? Right. Don't. There, there are much better decks to be playing next season, next balance, and I'll definitely cover those on my channel. It's opposed to this, this trash.